now we're moving on to the next portion. We're discussing our favorite comic artists. And we're, like I said, we're not talking about Laurel and Hardy or the Three Stooges. But the Marx Brothers, who were real comic artists. Shunk of the Three Stooges was the best comic artist of all time. Well, as you know, I'm a Shemp fan and not a Crowley fan, and that's almost sacrilege to some people. But we're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Wasn't a huge fan of Shemp. Oh. I, I like Shemp, but he wasn't my favorite. Oh, who was your gosh. favorite? I kind of liked Larry. Larry? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, boy. Larry. <laughs> yes. that's, now that's even wilder. Yeah, that, uh, a lot of people <clears throat> who like Larry are like, Really high in intelligence and stuff. What happened? I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I think I was dropped on my head. Uh, there you go. There you go. What no, was, what was that poster, Dave? You're talking about that? It just showed Shemp and it just had like one phrase. Oh God. Were you talking about that or was that Vance? Could have been Vance. Uh, I don't remember a poster with. There, there was a, a Shemp poster and it says on it, um, Shemp rocks because he does. Shemp rules because he does. It was like but, one one word. Yeah, it was a one word poster, and I cannot remember it. And uh, Shempify. No, <laughs> I can't remember it. Now. I think it, it was, was like a, perfect or something like yeah, that. Oh yeah, it was the perfect. It was the perfect phrase for it. And I think it was illustrated by um, one of the Friedman. Uh, the yeah, Friedman yeah, brothers. Yes, yeah. but I can't remember what it said now. Hmm. I am sorry. Okay. To you, we're, we're, not, we're not going to hold it against you. It's not that bright. No. Rick, who is your favorite comic artist? The person who draws comics. Comic comic probably Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson, yes, good choice. And why do you like Bernie Wrightson? <coughs> Just the, the zombies. Yeah. The old horror comics. Yeah. Uh, Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, all that stuff. Neil Adams, I like Neil Adams a lot. Yeah. Neil Adams is a... He's, and Frazetta's comic art. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. His stuff from the 50s, beautiful. Yeah, when you go back and look at... There's this comic that's set in the jungle called Untamed Love. And that is how a comic should be drawn. The shading's correct. The illustration's correct. The proportions are... Everything is correct in the story. And you can look at it, it's online at um, Comic Book Plus. Just type in Untamed Love and it's free, it's public domain, you can read the crap out of it. But you get to look at that artwork and you study it, and you just study it over and over again. Uh, Ricky and me were at a convention once, and there was a fellow from New York, and he was drawing these huge portraits and reducing them. And on the table he had this book, and he had the pieces of those huge portraits. And we got, we was there, but, you know, before it opened, you know, and we're walking around looking at stuff. And I got over to this guy's table, and I'm literally up on the table crawling across the artwork. You remember this, and you said to the guy, get off my table! <laughs> and the guy said, no, man, it's okay, he's like studying the art, remember? And, uh, he's, and after it was over with Rick, he's like, get off my table, come on, come on, what's wrong with you? Vance was like a little kid. It's like he was going, oh my gosh. I'm to take you outside and where are you at? <laughs> um, Dave, who is your favorite comic artist? Well, uh, Wally Wood. But it's, uh, when it comes down to comic artists, it's just, I don't look at just one artist. I usually look at the tag team, say, Wally Wood uh, by himself. But I love Steve Ditko Pencils, Ink by Wally Wood. For those who don't know what we're talking about, in comics, usually the formula is writer, then it goes into the penciler. The penciler is then inked or embellished by an inker, and then it goes over to the colorist and then to the printer, and et cetera, et cetera. So you would count, usually you would count the penciler and the inker as kind of a tag team. So if you'll continue, I'm sorry. No, no problem. Um, so that particular team, um, what do I like? Uh, uh, Ricky was talking about Frank Frazetta's comic book work, comic strip work back in the 50s now uh, when he collaborated with Al Williamson. That was magic. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. Either way around, it could be Frazetta penciling and then Williamson inking or Williamson inking and Frazetta. Uh, Williamson penciling and Frazetta inking. Either way, either way it was just uh, really great stuff. 
is this real thing of beauty. Now we've discussed our favorite artists and favorite comic artists. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about why in the world do we do what we do and what we like. As an example, Rick, you're an artist in the style you've chosen. What, what convinced you to draw in the style that you've chosen? And across the screen I'm showing some beautiful pictures by Ricky. And what, what led you to draw in that style? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, over, over time, I went through this period where I drew everything like I was drafting. Mm -hmm. When I worked for the engineering firm, it was with straight lines. Right. Then it went to dots. Yeah. And then it went to cross hatching and dots. Oh yeah. And then it went to, you know, pencils, and then paints, and then now I'm doing a little bit of marker work. Yeah. And some colored pencil work. Was it kind of a way to like to free up your kind of like creative spirit when you went from drafting to drawing again? Well. When I was drafting, mm -hmm. I would come home in the afternoons and I, didn't, I wouldn't draw anything. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was so tired of doing it yeah. all day long, I just didn't do it. Yeah. And then when that place got bought out by somebody else, and the first thing they did was get rid of anybody that made more money, <laughs> made a lot of money, you know, I, I got home and I, I wound up for a period of, I think about what, six months, seven months, maybe a year, doing, couldn't find a job. Nobody wanted to pay me. They said that, that they couldn't pay me enough. Yeah. You know, and I was like, well, hey, I'll take a pay cut, you know. Yeah. But, so I wound up working at, at a bank, pretty much. Right. And then started drawing again, and then my mom had always told me that, oh, you can't make any money selling monsters, drawing monsters, or anything like that. Remember that? Yeah. And after, when she passed away, there was a, probably about a two-year period. I didn't draw anything. Every time I went in there to do it, you know, I'd be thinking about her and stuff and just didn't feel like doing it. Right. And then, of course, The Walking Dead comes along. Right. And I decided one day, I said, well, I think I want to draw something, you know, draw something from The Walking Dead. So I did. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm drawing all these monsters. And now I've, I've sold more monsters and old horror movie stuff than I ever did in any animals. This is a, a true fact. And you've also been contacted by a lot of the fans of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when the, uh, an Australian podcast uh, contacted you, is that correct? Yeah, they did an article on me. I'm trying to think what the name of that group was. Gosh, that's been several years ago. Yeah. And then that Promote Horror did a little thing. Yeah. I'm on their website. Uh, I've got some other folks following me. Famous yeah. Monsters did comment on a drawing I did. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've done way better with monsters than I ever did animals. I've okay. got so many paintings of animals and drawings of animals upstairs at the house that it's not even funny. Uh, your skills are just fantastic. Thank you. You do a great job. And Dave, not many people know this, but when we first started working together, you were drawing or sketching out uh, what the <coughs> comic should look like, and you're not that bad of an artist yourself. But bad enough that I uh, don't uh, do my own <laughs> artwork. <laughs> but what, what, what influenced you to do the art style that you were doing? It was very Steve Ditko, I noticed. I don't know about being Ditko, because as I just said, Ditko is on well, my ra Mount Rushmore <laughs> of comic book artists. But, um, well, a lot of stuff that I was doing was um, uh, takeoffs of the Mexican masked wrestler movies. And... I always imagined Ditko actually drawing those. That, yeah. that the alternative world that lives inside my head. Uh, we had uh, Ditko drawing Mil Mascara stories, or yeah. Ditko drawing El Santo story, doing ad, uh, adaptations of El Santo movies, and uh, that's where it was coming from. I guess uh, Ditko style would have been perfect for those things, and maybe that's what I was uh, going for. Yeah, just wanted to say thank you for watching today's Draw TV. It's been a lot of fun talking to the fellows again. And uh, we'll see you on the next Draw TV. Hi, folks.
Have you recently lost interest in your favorite comic heroes? Do the current stories make you feel bored, restless, even lethargic? Are you reading back issues out of the 50 cent bin more often than not? Friends, you are not alone. There are thousands just like you, and the cure is Devil Bat. Devil Bat is a 48 page adventure comic by Vance Capley, released by Visual Comics and available through Lulu.com. Side effects include lack of sleep, increased adrenaline, antsiness for the next story, and really, really wanting to buy more Devil Bat merchandise. Ask your comic shop if Devil Bat is available for you, or get your copy at Lulu.com. Isn't it time for good comics again? Let Devil Bat start you on that journey today. <laughs> May 31st from Visual Comics. Available at Lulu.com. Oh, <laughs> 